A shout out to one of our amazing members who asked the question, how do I run an AI process in the backend workflow and yet give some feedback to my users that this process is going on and that they should wait for a response. So very quickly, this is what I've got set up. I have got a front end workflow running a, a Claude for request and I can simply say something like, hello, uh, and I'll say send message. And at the moment, all of this is running in the front end workflow and I'm using a custom state. Let me just give you a quick uh, demo of what that is. So uh, I'm sending my uh, made JSON save, multi-line input to Claude and I'm saving the, well, I'm not saving, I'm placing the response in a uh, custom state. Now that's fine if I know the AI is going to be really quick, but if you're using like a JSON mode or you're asking it to write a lot of text, uh, you may well want to put that in the back end workflow so that the user isn't waiting for that small bar to crawl across the top of the screen uh, in on the bubble app page. So let's go ahead and place this in a back end workflow. But before I do that, if you're learning Bubble, the quickest, the best way we believe for you to do that is to become a member of the Planet NoCo community. Not only do you get access to over 500 Bubble tutorials, you get access to a number of our courses and also all of that, all of that information has been transcribed and used to train our own custom AI learning assistant. And we just added in the last week or so, you can now join our community uh, on Slack, our exclusive members only community, and you can query our AI assistant within Slack. And even I can jump in and add in where the AI assistant hasn't quite hit the mark. I can jump in and help you out there. So uh, yeah, our aim is to ensure that no one gets stuck building their bubble app and we can really accelerate towards launching those MVPs together. Let's put this in a backend workflow. So I'm going to go into my backend workflows and I'm going to say um, uh, run, run Claude. Okay. Uh, and then now I'm going to add in my Claude uh, send message with AI. I need to send my text through. Mm, actually, no, I'm going to do this differently. Uh, which is the easiest way to do this is to create a thing in your database. So a row uh, in one of the tables of your bubble app. Uh, so we're going to do that here. We're going to say create a thing. Uh, and uh, I already have a number of uh, things created because this is the demo app that I've used uh, hundreds of times probably now. Uh, so I've just got message. And all I'm going to do is to uh, add in the text. So my multi-line inputs value is going in text. Then... This is why I, I hesitated. I'm going to use the message data type to send that through to here. And so now the, my body is the messages text made JSON safe. And then if I go back here, so I'm not making the AI call in the front end workflow. I'm going to create the message and then I'm going to schedule my back end workflow of uh, run Claude. My message is the result of step one, and I'm just going to say run it straight away. Okay. It's this step one. It's having the thing in the database that you can refer to is the vital bit between what is honestly quite challenging in Bubble of connecting what goes on in the back end uh, to the front end. So what I'm going to do is in the front end, at the moment, I've just got this text label, but let's start again. I'm going to add in a group. Okay. And this group is going to be ready to receive a message by setting type of content you could use a custom state here uh, but if you're just storing one thing you can just set a group to be like a container for that set thing uh, and then going to put in uh, a text okay and so i'm going to say uh, parent groups message now this is what i've sent out so okay maybe message isn't the right uh, term but i'm just going to say response because I need somewhere to save what I get back from Claude. So now this is primed to show what I get back from Claude, except I've not put what I created in step one into it. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to say show, uh, no, I'm not. I'm going to say display data group message. So it's called group message because Bubble has auto named it. It's here. So I, I could say a uh, response instead. Okay, and so the response is here. So this just means that until, if, as long as the user doesn't refresh the page, I have access to whatever was created in step one, and I have it uh, now ready to show in here. Now this field here, responses, is going to be empty 
until I save the response, so make changes to a thing, the message I send through, response, and then just because I'm not using any uh, structured data, it's just the first bit of content backs text. So if I was to ask Claude to do something really big, uh, then I would be waiting for the field response. Is it empty? Is it not empty? And this is the key bit that I wanted to unpack in this video is that I can now add in, um, I've just added an icon, but you could use like a Lottie animation. Um, do we have a loading icon? Okay, just got that. Uh, so what I can say is not visible on page load. So when parent group's message response is empty, I show loading, and then I could do something similar here too. I can basically say not visible on page load. When response is not empty, show element. So I've got that the right way around. So this is collapsed and hidden. That, let's make this much bigger so that it's easier to see. Uh, big icon. Okay. Uh, now let's just walk through it. So we're going to send the message. We create a message. This is our way of kind of linking the front end and the back end. We display the, re the message, even though the response field is empty because that's what we're checking. And then we pass the message through to the back end. Uh, so let's go ahead and check here. So we run uh, our Claude API call and then we save the response. So if we go back to our demo, uh okay all oh, right so we're just going to make a little fix there which is to say that this is only visible when this group's message is not empty okay but you don't have to do that it really depends how you lay it out I and mean, often i've kind of got uh, working with clients bubble coaching clients you can book one-to-one -one calls with me link down in the description um i have two columns so there's kind of like an input column and there's an output column and yeah you can do some amazing stuff with uh, some lotty animations to make it look good um let's give this a refresh and just so this is all a little bit easier to see i'm going to just group it all in a column add in some padding That's going to look better. Okay, so bear in mind, we might only see the loading icon flicker because Claude is going to be quite quick here. Um, so I'll, I'll give it something that's fairly uh, chunky. I'll say, uh, write a thousand word story about um, a... Uh, yellow cat so there's our loading animation and we should see that the uh yeah so the loading bar has gone all the way across now we're waiting on Claude to respond it's all happening in the back end workflow and obviously you could have a nice little animation but it's just uh it's just an icon for now Okay, and there's our response. Here's our story about sun being cat and the loading uh, icon has gone away. So quick recap for you. Uh, I wouldn't use a bland icon like this. I would at least display a text message saying kind of AI is generating these weights, maybe even a time estimate. Uh, and then you could use a Lottie animation or you can use like a CSS animation that you drop into a code block. Both are good. Both are things I've done in the past. Uh, so if you've got any questions, please leave a comment down below. Uh, and if you want to join our community because you've got, say, more than one question and you really want to accelerate to the progress of building your bubble app, uh, click the link in the description. Probably going to put the prices up uh, soon, uh, mainly because we've added in this whole Slack community with the AI assistant and also helping out one another. So do join us over at patentloco.com.